Well, hello. Hey there, Brian. How are you? <laughs> hey, Andy, doing well. How have things been on your end? Yeah, uh, it's been really busy. And uh, the sound check sounds good. I can hear you well. So good. a very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to the folks tuning in. Uh, we have with us this morning, this afternoon, this, this evening, uh, Brian, Brian Quinlivan from Santamon. Uh, and this, uh, we're back for the seventh time this year, and we have uh, quite a few things, uh, very interesting developments that have happened since we were last on 30 days ago. So um, let's, 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 I mean, look, what, what's happened in the last 30 days? Um, Germany's been dumping their, their Bitcoin. Um, Mount Gox is uh, set to release the Bitcoin to the people who have been very patiently waiting for it. Um, the Federal Reserve's been pretty ambiguous. Uh, they've taken a pretty ambiguous stance on interest rates. Um, and the latest, I think two days ago, Larry Fink appeared on CNBC with Jim Cramer talking about uh, Bitcoin. So, um, and and obviously the markets have been pretty pretty interesting, pretty choppy. Let's. Let's. Um, I'll hand it over to you, Brian, to see see what's been happening in the uh, in your neck of the woods. Yeah, I mean, the big one is the Trump assassination attempt. I think that, uh, in a lot of people's opinion, was what really sparked this rebound rally in the last few days, um, and might have single handedly kind of changed the trajectory of what we were going to be seeing the next few months. And because of that, I think the nature of our call is going to be a lot different than it would have been otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That um, that was quite a shocker. And I think on social media, uh, a lot of things are still cropping up. Uh, you know, new video footages from different angles and different evidence being found. Uh, it's definitely a topic of discussion that's, that's, uh, that's still ongoing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I can share my screen and show a few pieces of kind of analytical evidence that we have behind that because it's uh, you know a big claim to say that a political event like that can change crypto but we really saw um precisely to the minute how things changed and i'll show you guys here yeah that'd be great all right so this was a post we put out uh three days ago shortly after it happened and the big thing we saw was a Bitcoin downturn. This was literally right at the time it occurred. It was around 3.10 to 3.13 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, it was on the East Coast, so three hours ahead of me. And you suddenly see Bitcoin do a little drop. Nothing too crazy or anything, but likely some bit of reaction was related to this event and people hearing that Trump had been shot, which is technically true. Um, so people are wondering, is he okay? Uh, they're first hearing about it on social media. And then, you know, images start to surface of him holding up his hand in triumph, letting people know he's okay and appearing to mouth the words fight, right? Which went down pretty famously. And after that, we saw Bitcoin immediately take off like this. And if you don't believe it was related, you can see Trump coin down here, this green line spiking, obviously, much uh, more significantly in that same time span over the next hour or so. And you can see these blue and red lines here are the social frequency of the word Trump, uh, which are going to be identical, of course. The only difference on these two charts would be this is Bitcoin and this is Trump coin. And obviously, a speculative coin that is representative of the presidential candidate here in the U.S. is going to have more volatility when it comes to direct Trump news. So long story short, this was the bottom right here, literally as the news was coming down and we had this short drop and then it absolutely took off to where it is now in the 64.5K range. Uh, it was up just a tad above 65K yesterday. So we've we've gone from people wondering about whether we're going to be hitting 50k and below soon to wondering how quickly 70k or above is going to happen and i think the sentiment has just completely flipped on its head as a result of this event 
Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think um, uh, speaking of meme coins, I, I think um, someone else sent me, uh, besides the Trump coin, I think there was a MAGA coin, um, which did which which looked pretty similar uh, to to that trajectory. <clears throat> yeah, if we take a look at MAGA, which actually has the ticker Trump, not to be confused with the Trump coin, um, there was a little bit of a reaction, not quite on the same level. So if we go to a really granular view, we'll do a line chart, look at five minutes, give it a just a moment to load here, and there we go. So the occurrence was very obvious here. I'm going to zoom in and just look at the past week or so. Um, we'll actually just hide all of these for now so you can see the price on its own. Yeah. So July 13th, this was as it went down and we see this huge spike uh actually extremely similar uh, and it actually got all the way up to about a 63 percent spike over the next few hours or so before naturally it's going to decline as crypto markets are uncertain and you know the overreaction starts to even out yeah, absolutely. And, um, so obviously, it's uncanny. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it, no, it I was really just is. How? It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's that really reflects the speculative nature of crypto in a nutshell. You know, we have many fundamental things that are positive for cryptocurrency and has helped to launch, uh, you know, Bitcoin to that March all-time high and so many other market caps growing independently as a result of Bitcoin being able to carry the load. Um, but at the end of the day, especially meme coins, you know, related to Trump, related to cute dogs, whatever, those are the ones where it's really the people who control the, the price more so than those huge, um, you know, massive, um, the word I'm looking for. I'll, I'll just leave it as as huge whale addresses and key stakeholders that kind of carry the load and decide when Bitcoin and all of crypto is going down. But if Bitcoin is kind of in a range, that's where you'll see meme coins do their own thing. And especially after the Trump news, Bitcoin took off and, and you know, Trump and everything else kind of saw uh, some profit redistribution over the past week. Yeah, yeah. And it's amazing how quickly the, you know, well, how high correlation um, there was to to the event and, and how quickly the market reacted. 100%. Yeah. I mean, as we saw, yeah. and it, these are kind of the 30 day returns, but we can, of course, change to just the seven day. And this was, you know, the event happened uh, f five days ago. So give or take, this is a pretty good sample size of what that effect looked like. And you have plenty like XRP up 44% over the past week. Pretty impressive stuff. It's been kind of the talk of the town as of late. Near's gone off, Pepe, internet computers right up there with XRP. Uh, Our Weave is another good one. Here's another meme coin, Whiff. So there are plenty of assets that have independently been able to decouple in the past seven days, but 30 days gives a, a more interesting perspective in my opinion because it's much more of a mixed bag where bitcoin is actually still down about 1.8 percent since we last spoke last month andy uh yes yeah 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 that's uh so what are your thoughts like you know is 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 do, do you think that that or does the does the rally look like it's you know it's gonna last, um, or or you think it's a knee jerk reaction to the to the news? It seems a bit knee jerk to me. Um, we were already starting to feel like the dip was getting a bit too aggressive at the beginning of the month, so mm -hmm. it's almost gone from kind of a um, overly aggressive downturn to a overly aggressive rebound. And the truth, as most markets are, lies somewhere in between. And uh, that's where we can kind of look at the fundamentals. I was looking at the whales, as we often do on our calls. 
And uh, yeah. they still look pretty good here. When I check out the 10 plus uh, addresses, the, essentially the sharks and whales, since late April, almost three months ago, these 10 plus wallets have accumulated about 44.5K more Bitcoin, which is a pretty good sign. Uh, I would like to see, make it a little bigger here. I'd like to see this line turn around at some point. This is kind of the sharks and whales tether holdings. And it's showing their buying powers continuing to decrease because obviously they're swapping a lot of their tether for Bitcoin. And ideally, you need more of their fiat coming in to replenish that tether and keep the uh, 100K to $10 million line moving in the right direction. Yeah. USD yeah. coin looking a little bit better at least. Yeah. So um, besides that, I mean, Bitcoin mm -hmm. supply and exchanges are staying down. That's a good sign. Um, yeah. Tether and USD coin supply and exchanges are moving up, which is, it makes sense because a lot of buying has been had. Um, flat funding rates are not much going on there. Uh, we made this insight earlier today. In fact, I'll just pull up the uh, insights page. It's a better example. So this is the total amount of holders, basically non-empty wallets in Bitcoin over time. And there is a net drop of about 672.5K wallets compared to a month ago that held Bitcoin in them. Roughly 1.3% drop or so, not huge, huge significant, but it is a long enough drop where it's the biggest we've seen in about nine months or so, arguably 10, going back to late September to late October. That's the last time we saw something like this. And for those who remember what happened toward the end of October of 2023, that's when the big bull rally started, right? That's when we started to really see, I'll, I'll visualize it because that's easier than just explaining it. Um, that's when we really started to see all of crypto take off. And crypto, of course, more than doubled since that time. You can see October 14th and 15th right around here. Prices were still at, um, looks like about 27K. Let me add on total amount of holders to it. So this is the last time we saw the line really go down and kind of stay down for a, a long period of time. And this is often a sign of capitulation. So look at it as kind of an inverse correlation where small traders are, are the ones making up most of these wallets. You're not seeing, you know, hundreds of thousands of whale wallets out there. They don't even exist. There's only a few thousand that exist. So in order for this line to go down, it takes several hundred thousand mini tiny wallets deciding to liquidate their assets. And that that's what causes, you know, a lower amount. And obviously where does that money usually go when they're the small ones are liquidating? Well, the whales and, and sharks are scooping them up. And we saw here just a huge, um, increase as FOMO kicked in when prices were rising. And then they finally dropped here, right? In early to mid January. And then we see another drop in total amount of holders right here. Another looks like 748,000 or so while, uh, while it's liquidate. And finally they, they stop fudding and decide to start accumulating again. We get that all time high. And we really haven't seen a drop like this in total amount of holders since this drop, which was obviously a precursor to a pretty good time in crypto. Yeah, yeah. And and again, it's um, when you correlate the data like that, it's, you know, it, it seems so obvious, doesn't it, Brian? It looks yeah. so obvious. Yeah. I mean, some are better than others. You don't, there are going to be exceptions where you see the total amount of holders going down. And sometimes even the tiny, well, let's get it right. A broken clock is right twice a day. But if you use probabilities on your side, you you generally are going to do well if you do the opposite of what those small trader uh, crowd representatives are doing. And you're going to do well if you follow what the whales and sharks are doing. So right now, it's still a pretty favorable picture, in my opinion. 
So, so Brian, look, looking at this chart uh, with the latest decline, right, uh, in terms of uh, number of wallet holders, um, it, it looks like a more gradual decline compared to the one back in um, September last year. Yeah? True. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But that was more pretty sustained. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good, right? That's very good. Yeah, I mean, it really means that the consensus for a little over a month now has been Bitcoin's going to go down. And they were yep. probably patting themselves on the back as it was going down up until the bottom hitting right around the, I guess I'd say July 7th or so. But even after mm -hmm. this rebound, it's not like they've changed their tune. They're continuing to drop kind of like they yep. were here. You can see Bitcoin's price is going up a little bit back here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they, they weren't convinced. And that is ultimately what allows many rallies to become bull runs when prices start to go up and nobody's really FOMOing, or at least a, a small level of FOMO is happening compared to normal. Uh, so yeah. there isn't much resistance and whales and sharks can just push up prices without, uh, you know, having to deal with much price punishment on the way up. Yeah. That's a very cool chart right there. Love it. Yeah, I thought it would be interesting. Yeah. And obviously, yeah. you know, when it comes to MVRV, uh, because of this rally, we went from negative back here up to positive again. So it's a little more risky of a time for the short term where average returns are up at around plus 6%. Uh, long term traders are up an average of about 17%. Ideally, we want to see them both below zero. We've talked about that plenty of times on previous calls. Um, yep. But yeah, I mean, as of now, not too crazy of whale activity, but the activity that, that is happening uh, is indicating that they're continuing to accumulate. And uh, I'm seeing a lot more, you know, strong signs than weak signs that Bitcoin can return to uh, <coughs> close to those potential all time high levels again. Cool, cool. Could we um, uh, possible? Is it possible for us to take a quick look at Ethereum? Because I, I know when it was going down, it dropped to as low as uh, around the 2,800 mark. And then, but, um, and then that, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's enjoyed a little bit of a rebound. It was down in the 2,700s just about mm. 10 days ago, and it rebounded as high as uh, almost 3,500 or so. It could have briefly spiked over it i'm not positive but right now it's sitting at 3423 uh which is according to its point from its all-time high it's down 15.7 percent from its all-time high um yep. which means it's held up pretty well compared to a lot of altcoins out there that really fell off a cliff cardano is one that comes to mind yeah yeah address activity fairly normal at this time uh, mm -hmm. Circulation about the same. MVRV looks actually like a pretty similar picture to Bitcoin at the moment. Both short and long term traders are a little bit above zero at the moment, meaning there's a tad more risk than usual. Uh, mm -hmm. I would note that the funding rate here, if I zoom in a little bit, there there are some signs that uh, that it's moving up. Let me see if I can pin the axis a little better here. Yeah, so this bright green area, this is the last day and a half or so on, by, uh, yeah, this is BitMEX, excuse me. So when we see spikes like this, it means that there's a little bit of greed going on. So I, I get the impression, you know, there's still some optimism about the impending ETFs uh, being publicly released and uh, various bullish narratives forming. Um, that's giving people enough comfortability to put their money where their mouth is right now with Ethereum. It's interesting to note, yeah. So between Bitcoin and Ethereum, there might be a few yellow caution flags popping up for Ethereum. But of course, if Bit Bitcoin's able to take off, Ethereum is still going to follow and potentially outperform it due to the... Uh, optimism and anxiousness people have about the ETFs. So, yeah, I think oh. from a speculative perspective, there can be things working in Ethereum's favor, 
on chain wise, uh, Bitcoin looks like it has a small edge here. Yeah. And supply and exchanges is moving up to on Ethereum, which is a bit of a concern. It's been moving up for quite some time, interestingly. Yeah. So this is kind of the exact opposite of Bitcoin. We were going straight down for a long period of time. And then all of a sudden it's just rising monumentally. Wow. So this could be related to some DeFi wallets. It could simply be related to, you know, some key staking or DeFi wallets that are now being attributed as exchange wallets instead of non-exchange. Who knows? But this looks like a pr pretty consistent rise. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, prone to believe that this would be uh, something to be a tiny bit concerned about. And then RSI, it's just slightly above average right now. This is the 50.0 line. This is kind of mm -hmm. where RSI rests on average. So anything above is a bit risky. Anything below is an opportunity. So congratulations mm -hmm. if you bought in around the 4th of July. That was when the RSI was clearly showing we were bottoming out. Nice. Nice. Yeah, so overall, social, uh -huh. yeah, sorry, go ahead. Social trend wise, um, we can look at some trending coins here. And we see that XRP is the one that's really getting the most hype right now. Uh, there's definitely a bullish narrative that's formed here. And you can see that uh, retail investors in particular are really jumping in. I'm not going to read all of this for the interest of time. Uh, but it looks like this is kind of, for the XRP community, something that was a long time coming. And they're doing their best to keep the momentum going right now. Uh, I would just be we uh, weary of it getting into too bullish of a narrative because that's where FOMO kicks in and local tops form. Mm. World coin also up there. I know it's had some big uh, days the last few. A couple other out there, Gods, Wild. We saw that Near was doing pretty well on our top 100 list. ONT, there's Ethereum as uh, mm -hmm. ETFs are still the big topic of discussion. Stellar mm -hmm. is up there, Tether, yeah. and Toncoin, which has been uh, uh, among the very best performers of 2024 thus far. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Wow. That's, um, yeah, a bit of a mixed bag, but very, uh, I, I guess, leaning more towards um, bullishness than, than, uh, than the other way. Yeah, I, I mean, we're very recently starting to see a bit of a bounce. So naturally, the crowd has become a bit more, uh, you know, cautiously optimistic. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go that far because we're still seeing kind of a uh, tentativeness, as we saw with total amount of holders for Bitcoin. Like people are still yeah. liquidating wallets more than creating new ones right now, mm -hmm. which is a good mm -hmm. sign, by the way. But we did yeah. this post uh, yesterday, yeah. and this kind of just looks at the sentiment for four key large caps, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, and Cardano. You can see people are very, very bearish toward Cardano um, after mm -hmm. it's dropped 43% in the past four months. Uh, the price performance for XRP, meanwhile, hasn't stopped. It's still looking good. So the bullish calls and the optimism related to XRP are still very much prevalent throughout social media. And these two lines that are kind of in between, they're mm -hmm. actually showing there's still a bit more bearish narrative for both Bitcoin and Ethereum compared to usual. So yes, we're seeing kind of more of a bullish bias on the social trends page, but you'll also notice that Bitcoin is not on this list. Um, it was being talked about a lot after uh, the bounce following the Trump news, but uh, it's it's not among the ones that are seeing like this big bullish euphoric spike. Uh, and that's something that you should be aware of as people are kind of distracted by altcoins for the time being. Yep. Yep. Well, that um, I guess we're almost almost uh, uh, end of end of the. 
the session for us. Um, so what are any any final thoughts, uh, Brian, for the for the audience? What do you sure? Think? I mean, keep in mind the correlation with the S and P as well. That's something that uh, we might be updating on our social media soon. We definitely have seen. In fact, we were talking about the divergence at the beginning of July, where the S and P was continuing to just climb and climb and climb, while Bitcoin was struggling. Uh, and yeah. so this gap here. This growing gap, I guess I'll just do that to illustrate it. Mm -hmm. uh, or actually, this would be easier. So S&P like this, Bitcoin kind of like that. That's a bullish divergence for crypto if you believe that there's a correlation between the two sectors. And you probably should believe that because that's been the trend for about two and a half years, ever since the Fed started cutting um interest rates, or I should say rising interest rates again in early 2022. So mm -hmm. the fact that this was forming meant that something like that was probably going to be inevitable. And the S&P finally had kind of a really bad day uh, earlier today on my end. It's uh, the evening now, but market closed mm -hmm. about six hours ago and it, it actually dropped about one and a half percent. But uh, I, I would I would presume that Bitcoin and the S and P are still going to trade somewhat similarly for the time being, um, until some event really allows Bitcoin to break through once again. So think of Bitcoin a little like a leveraged tech stock right now, and uh, you know understand that there's still going to be a little bit of mercy uh, and and uh, reliance on the S&P 500 and equities for uh, likely at least the rest of this year. I'd, I'd say the election at the end of the year might be an interesting time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's always an interesting time during election year. Um, and that's that's um, November, isn't it? Is that November? Correct. Okay. Yeah. And the new president, whoever he is, ends up uh, taking office in January. Yeah, yeah. Or I should say he or she, because there's a small probability that uh, Kamala Harris uh, runs as the Democratic candidate, if you know who that is. That was, um, she's the current vice president uh, for President Joe Biden. So there's a possibility of that and uh, a lot of different trajectories we can take in the next few months. Yeah, it's going to be a very interesting time between now and when we find out who the new president of the United States is going to be. Um, yeah, and uh, markets could potentially be very volatile in that period, too. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, people don't like to hear this, but um, at least according to the crowd, we've seen clear pro-crypto narratives coming when news comes out that Trump is more likely to be president. That doesn't mean you should believe that or you should like one candidate more than the other. But investing is about not what you like necessarily, but what you know the crowd likes and what they are going to pump next. So whether you're a huge fan of Trump or not a huge fan of Trump, if you're understanding that the uh, crypto community reacts more positively to any news that shows he could be president next. Um, you can trade according to that until that narrative changes. Uh, and clearly, you know, this event and the uh, conclusion of it showed that uh, a lot of people felt Trump came out on top of this and, and had a higher likelihood of being president as a result of surviving an assassination attempt. So it's a pretty meta discussion, but there's a lot of traders out there who have made a lot of money just from understanding how the crowd tends to react to pro-Trump or pro-Biden news or anti-Trump or anti-Biden news. And it's only going to ramp up more and more over these next four months before the election. And and that's, uh, that's actually a very good point. Um... To end with because um at the end of the day as you mentioned brian it's not about what your personal preferences are it's about being data driven in your analysis and uh and um 
you know, it's a perfect time for a plug, but that's exactly what, what, what sentiment is. It's, it's all pure data. It's for you to interpret and to uh, figure out what's happening um, uh, based to be data driven and, and not to be emotionally driven when, when, when making your, 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 your decisions, um, whether to buy that's or right. to sell. Yeah. 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 yeah so, and um, I'll plug you right back and, and let everyone know that uh, code equities tracker, all one word in all caps, will get you 25% off of your first purchase, whether it's one month or a year or anything in between. Uh, I highly recommend you support Andy's great uh, company and channel here uh, if and when you would like to sign up for uh, a Sandbase Pro account. You get two weeks free upon any sign up, so keep that in mind as well. There you go. There you go. Yeah, this was a, this was a really, really good Good one, uh, Brian. I am definitely looking forward to next month to see you know what develops in the, in the next four weeks. Thanks, my friend. Yeah, we will uh, have a lot to catch up on, and I can't wait. Absolutely. Well, you have a great one. And uh, to the audience, thank you for tuning in and watching right to the very end. Have a good one, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Thanks, Brian.